Hello there. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bort and I will be showing you how to make a fiberglass resin Captain America shield based on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Now, this project is based off of a video I saw from BrainFu. He does an amazing tutorial. It is way better than what I could do. It's a lot cleaner. I just wanted to make an updated version with the new engraved designs shown in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. All right, so for this project, you're gonna need one flexible fire shield. Um, this is actually an aluminum shield from the Griswold movie, or Griswold, Griswold. I, I, I've never heard of this movie. But it has Chevy Chase. Next, you're gonna need some PVA mold release. I'll show it to you later in the video. And the pista resistance, you're gonna need some fiberglass resin and some fiberglass sheets. I use different weaves, so I have this type and then I have this um, more heavy duty version. And having different weaves basically, I think makes it stronger. You wanna get a drawer handle and some miscellaneous straps. You're also gonna need some miscellaneous paints and some black acrylic paint. And last but not least, very important, you're gonna to wanna to grab some rubber ball for the silver ring. I'm pretty bad at masking things. For some reason for me, the paint always comes peels up. And probably because I don't wait long enough for the paint to dry. It's your own damn fault. Uh, but this stuff really makes it easier just to get that line right and make that nice even circle ring. So here we're just gonna smooth down any bumps so that when we make the mold of the shield, it'll be completely smooth. Okay, so when working with fiberglass resin, it is very, very important that you wear a respirator and have eye protection and wear long sleeves, like I have on, and gloves. Um, Cause it's a skin irritant, it's an eye irritant, it's, 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 it's generally irritating. So. Uh, the way we're going to mount our shield rig is we're going to use this thing, which is a pulley I got at Home Depot. What we're going to do is we're going to pull this off, take off this nut. Oh, fire in the hole! What the fuck? And now you're just going to be left with this piece. Yeah. You're going to be left with this piece. So we're going to put this on the back end of our shield rather than adding a back strap. Let's do the First thing you want to do is grab some of this PVA mold release. Grab it on Amazon, link in the description. And you're just going to put two coats on top of this uh, mold shape just so that when you release it, uh, it doesn't just stick to the, the aluminum. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this, uh, this, and this. Um, so for every ounce, it's gonna be 10 drops of the hardener. Uh, uh, since I wanna work only for 10 minutes, because that's the set time, I'll probably just put in about four to eight ounces. So 40 to 80 drops. We're gonna put that bolt that I showed you earlier um, equidistant from the set point, which we can see just through the shield. So for this part, you're going to want to do about four to five layers of five plus sheeting. You can go thicker, but it just gets exponentially more difficult to cut through. So once the resin cures, yeah, you're gonna wanna pry it out of the mold. <laughs> Look at this. That 
looks nice. Look how smooth it is. That's going to be nice. This came out so much better than I thought. 10 out of 10 review for brain food. Look at this. I should wear gloves. All right, let's uh, scrape all that stuff. Once you release the resin cast on the bowl, uh, you're going to want to use the little divot we created earlier with the drill. And slot something in there. I'm just using a chopstick. And then I've measured out this piece of foam to act as a sort of compass. Get it to work. Respirator and eye protection, and do it so the wind is blowing away from you. Safety first. This is coming out a lot better than I thought it was gonna. I'm very pleased. And you gotta be fucking pleased about it. Just this dope shape. Oh my god. After the bowler wrap, I needed a win. Thank you. Okay, so now we've cut out the shape. We're gonna sand down the edges. Normal sand. Just so that the edges don't cut as well. Messed up a little bit. I did not rear, uh, put any covering on the screw threads, so the resin just kind of messed up the seal here. here. The fucking what? The connection here, and I can't screw it any tighter than this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this off and then use whatever thread remains with another nut, and hopefully that'll fix it. Why did I just JB welding it on for the extra space? I did end up cutting the screw off and adding another nut, but there still was some space, so I just filled that gap. Alright, so first we're gonna do is we're gonna paint this whole thing with some sandable primer. We're gonna sand it down and add the uh, brush seal effect, and then we'll add this chrome and the rest of the paint. So, if you couldn't already guess, the first paint job went pretty freaking terribly. Um, I should have used masking tape, but I did not wait long enough for the paint to dry, uh, so it did not turn out the way I wanted. The second time around, I did use masking tape, but I still did not use the right amount of drying time. And here we are. This is how the first paint job turned out. Uh, I didn't like it at all, so I sanded it down again with some gray filler primer just to make it smooth again, and then I decided to do the paint job all over again just to make it more movie accurate.
One thing to note is that the more layers of paint and primer you have, the deeper the grooves are going to be when you do the soldering and details later on. Center circle. Uh, I'm just using the circle I cut out of EVA foam, and then I took out the rest of the sheets. And then to fix these rough edges, I made a little circle out of some cardstock, and that's just going to slot in here. So I trace out a few more circles using the same method as before, just to get the detail lines right. What I've kind of done here is I've used my soldering iron to burn out the circles to add a little bit of a engraved surface, just like in the movies. I've gone ahead and I've done the inner circle that's in the detail lines for the new shield in Captain America, uh, sorry, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Rip Steve. Fun fact, in the new MCU movies, Black Widow, Iron Man, and Captain America are all grayed out because, you know. That. So for the new shield, there are these five little trapezoid shapes for each point of the star uh, that on the detail ring inside the silver one, and that's what I'm just adding here. For the middle star, I just used a piece of cardstock and cut out the star shape from printout. There are these five little inner uh, pieces inside of the star, so I'm just using my soldering station as a straight edge to make the line straight, but you can use a ruler or whatever that can withstand the heat of your soldering iron. Alright, so for the silver ring, um, I'm going to use some rub and buff. Now we get the metal look. So a little goes a long way with this stuff. We're gonna cover the whole thing with a coat of uh, black wash and I'm just gonna use some coat paint mix with a little bit of water. So uh, here I kind of messed up. I thought it would look a little better with the weathering but it kind of just washed out the shine. So I went back and redid it and I just kept in the grooves so that uh, the details would show while the actual shine would still be pristine. So we're just going to make a hole in the strap, slide it over this, slide this on top. So the metal disc was too thick so I just made a plastic one and that worked out fine. And then seal that in. So I used some super glue and some foam to make the strap a little thicker and then I cut out this piece of PVC sheet to, to lock the foam strap in place. Uh -oh. Ba -ba. Ba -ba. Ah. All right, shield is done. I am very proud of this. Obviously, there's things that I would change. Like uh, if I were to do it over again, I definitely coat it a couple more times with the gray primer and sand it down just so it's completely smooth. Probably would have waited a little bit longer for the paint to dry before I added the rubber buff, but. You know, it's a lot better than it was going to be, so... Not bad, kid. So that's it for the build video. Um, thanks for watching. Next week, we're going to be doing the destruction test where we try to destroy this with Kratos' Leviathan Axe. Now, we bought this from Ukraine. It's a steel-forged uh, axe head, and it's very nice. 
wow, 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 he's a very nice. So the way we do our test films is a little bit different. Um, we're gonna be doing a cinematic rendition with some fight choreography, but the damage is gonna be in real time. So you'll see how durable it can really be in an actual fight. We're gonna be throwing this thing around. We're gonna be hitting it with the X. If you wanna see the test film, hit that ringer next to the subscribe button and you'll get a notification for my next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like, comment. Edit, that doesn't sound. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. There we go. That sounds, that sounds more like it. <laughs>